Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use mono features and mono dissect in Cheat Engine. This works for games that are made in Unity. I'm going to try to make this video really easy to follow. So regardless of your skill level, by the time you finish watching this video, you should be able to use mono dissect. So here we have our game open. It's loaded in. We have our Cheat Engine open. We're going to attach cheat engine to the process click open or attach if you're not sure if the game you're playing is compatible with this method you'll see right at the top here this option for mono this appears if the game has mono features if your game does not have mono features you will not get this option so we're going to click on mono and then activate mono features and then we can go to dissect mono and this is going to open up a window that has this address here. And if you click this little arrow to do a drop down, it's going to show you all these .dll files. This is all of the code that the game uses. Now, this step requires a little bit of investigative work. Because you have access to all of the game's code, you're going to have to go and find the code that you want to start to mess with. A good place to start would be assembly-csharp.dll. This is where most of the game's code will likely be. And we're going to click this drop down arrow and it's going to take a little while to load because it might be a lot. Okay, so now that it's dropped down, we can start to basically skim over this entire list of code. And we're going to look for anything that looks kind of juicy, something fun to mess with. For example, here there's casino slot machine outcome. That could be something fun to play with. But just for the sake of learning, I think we should probably stick to something like player stats, player scripts, something like that. And it's not going to be the same for every game because it really matters on how the developer of this game wrote the code. If you want, you can use the search feature to do find or find class, and that will give you this search dialog window. And you can search for something like health, money, damage, movement, and that can help you find your result faster. But I do recommend skimming through all of these functions, all of these classes, just to get an idea of how the game is put together. And that's going to help you to understand how you can cheat the game further. So we found a class here called player scripts.player, and we can drop this down. And you have a few more options here. And really the most important one that you want to look at is fields. And this is going to tell you all of the variables that are being in use by this class. And here we have things like eye position, health, energy, and we can see a lot of this is used for handling the state of the player. And the other one is methods, and this is functions tied to this class. So we can see what we have here. Uh, get inventory, get is grounded. This is for jumping logic. It doesn't look like there's much we can do with the player class here. So we might want to look for other things like player inventory, player movement. That could be a fun one. And we're going to drop down player movement and we'll go into fields. And we can see here can move, can jump, move speed multiplier, jump force, gravity multiplier. And these are all values in the game that you would normally just use Cheat Engine and start scanning for these values. And this is where Mono Dissect really shines. You don't have to scan for any of this stuff. It's going to give it all to you on a silver platter. But how do you do that? So we're going to go to this player scripts dot player movement class and we're going to right click on it and we're going to click find instances of class. And this is going to give us a big list of addresses. And if you drop down any one of these, it's going to show you all of these fields that we found in our dissector window, but they all have a value attached to them. Now, all of these addresses are wrong, 
but one of them is right or some of them are right but you need to find just one that is right so in the first part we looked through the code and we found code that we want to play with and the next part we have to do a little bit more investigation we have to basically disqualify all of these instances and find one that's going to work for us so a really easy way to do that is to go through the fields you have here in the dissector and find values that you can probably guess what the value might look like an easy example would be to find a type boolean and you know that this value will be either a zero or a one because it's a boolean and you can find multiple booleans like another boolean here is crouched is ragdolled is sprinting as well as a couple other ones here where it says system.single that would be a float number um, so move speed multiplier essentially we just want a clue towards what these values should look like so i just picked this one random here uh, can move boolean 48 can jump 45 so this is disqualified automatically because i know that these have to be a zero or a one now an easy way to go through these you can just pick the one at the top and hit the right arrow and that will drop it down and you can quickly see this is not right and we could do the left arrow to collapse it down arrow to go to the next one right arrow to expand it and we can see these values don't make sense this one all of the values are zero that doesn't look right can move zero can jump zero um, i know that my character in the game can move and he can jump so i know that these values should likely be a one and not a zero so i'm going to disqualify that one as well and we're just going to go down this list luckily i already know that in this game the address that comes up at the very bottom of the list is usually the one that's correct. And that makes it very easy to cheat in this game in particular. But I have gone through this entire list in the past. And we can see here we have can move one, can jump one, move speed multiplier one, jump force 5.25, gravity multiplier 1.39. These values all look like they make sense sprint active zero sprint released one yeah everything about this instance makes me think that i'm looking at the correct one just to recap we found this player movements class and from there we found instances of that class and then we found which is the correct instance of this class so this address that we have here 2868e0d2160 this is the address for this instance of the class so we're going to copy the selection of this address and we're going to go into our main cheat engine window and and we're going to click add address manually and this is where we're going to paste that address for the instance so here you see the address is here and then in our add address window i added it here and in our dissector this value here that you see under fields uh, 20 28 30 34 these are the offsets for where these values are stored in memory i know that sounds confusing but it's really simple to grasp basically you have the address here and then we're going to do plus and then whatever number we see on the side here so if we want to see our move speed multiplier value we're going to put 3c so we have our address plus 3c and we're going to set the type to float and you can see the value is one and you can see in our instance window the move speed multiplier is one so we're going to click ok and that's going to add that address to our address list in cheat engine i'm just going to rename it to move speed and I'm going to set that value to 10. Now we're going to go in our game. And you can see my character is now moving really, really fast. I'm going to set that value back to 1. And now he's moving at regular speed. 
We'll also do this for the gravity multiplier. So we're just going to do add address manually. Paste in our instance address plus, and then we're going to look for our gravity multiplier offset, which is 48, 48. And we're just going to change that to 0 0.1 because we want gravity to be low. And now when we jump, we should be able to jump really high. Yeah, so now we're above the buildings. So if I wanted to, I can just go and grab all of these addresses. You can see I didn't have to scan for any of them. They're all just here for me to take. So I'm going to close that instance window. And back in the dissector, I'm going to click somewhere near the top of the list of all of these classes. And I'm going to go search. And instead of this search entire file, we're going to leave that unchecked. And I'm just going to type in time. And it's going to find me the next, the next class that has time in it. And I'm just going to look at the methods and the fields under this class. It doesn't look like it's promising. Uh, so we have set time scale. There's no fields there. It's probably not a good one. And we found a class here called GameTime.TimeManager. We have one field here called Elapsed Days, which is a great field because I have a vague idea of how many days have passed in the game. And then we have current time, which is great if we want to manipulate the time. And in a game like this where time does play a factor, it is good to be able to control time. So again, we're going to just right click on this time manager class and click find instances of class. Again, we're going to get this nice big list of candidates. And I can look at this value here, elapsed days 642, which I know in the game there's only been about 15 days that have passed, so I can disqualify that one. Elapsed days zero, that's also wrong. Now this one class, it has elapsed days 18, current time 400, time progression is one. This looks like a good candidate, so I'm going to copy this address for this class. And I'm going to add an address and I'm going to put the offset for my current time, which is plus one, two, eight. And we can see here that current time is stored as int. So we're just going to set it to type four bytes so that it shows properly, which is number 400. And we'll see if we set this to something like 1200. Yeah, so it just turned the game from nighttime into daytime. That is the correct address for our time. And that also does confirm that this is the correct instance of this class of time manager. So there is a little bit of extra steps you have to take to get to this final step. But once you get there, you have full access to all of these values. Now that is all great if you just want to grab all of the addresses for values that you want to manipulate. And that is everything that's shown to you in this field dropdown. But another thing that's very powerful is that you can also access the methods or the functions and you can invoke these or call them manually whenever you want. For example, we have a method here called get underscore current time. And if we right click on it, we can select execute slash invoke method. And it's going to ask you for the instance address, which we already found. So we're just going to paste it in there and click OK. And now this window is going to pop up with a little dialog console window, and it's going to say, 15, 16, which is the current time in the game. So anytime you want to invoke one of these methods, there's a good chance you're going to have to provide a parameter. And next to the method, it's usually going to tell you what kind of parameter it's looking for. So if we wanted to do set gravity multiplier value system single, 
that means it's going to look for a float number or a decimal number. So we'll right click on it and do execute invoke method. We're going to put the address of our instance and it's going to give us an option to put in the value for the parameter. So here we'll put uh, 1.555 and click OK. Uh, nothing happens because we're just doing a function. It's not going to show us anything, but there is this other function called get gravity multiplier. And again, we're going to put the address here. Now, this does not require any parameters because it's just a get function. It's going to return data to us. So when we click OK, it's going to say method return 1.5549999. Uh, so just to show quickly again, we still have this window open. We'll just make it 1.9888 and then press OK to search it. And it's going to say 1.98888. So by using mono dissect, we can easily find the address and value of almost anything that we want. And once we have that, we can also access all of the methods in the same class. And we're just going to do one more example just for tutorials sake. Uh, we have another one here called money dot money manager. We go into fields and we see online balance. So we're just going to right click on money manager, find instances of class, and we're going to start going through all of these. Now, this value online balance I have here is 500,000 in my game. So I'm just going to look through all of these and I'm going to find one where it says online balance 500,000. It's likely this one. So I'm going to try to copy this address, add address manually, and then plus 130, no, 128. So I'm going to put in the address for this class, plus 128, which is the offset for online balance. It says 500,000, and we'll click OK. And we'll just go ahead and change that to something like 99999. Now it hasn't updated because the UI has not updated. But if we go up to the ATM here, you can see it says 999999. Um, if we want, we can just change this to a random number, 4564564566. And you can see that updated as well. I did not have to scan, change value, scan again. I was able to just go in and grab it. And that is how you use Mono Dissect with Cheat Engine with games made in Unity. I hope this video was easy to follow and you learned something. If you did learn something from this video, like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.